guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Ray, and whenever I was 17, almost 18 years old, I left the cult that I was born in. Um, if you're interested in seeing that video, I'll leave it down in the description box down below. But today, I have my cousin Allison here, who also came from the cult that I was born in. So she is also half-sisters to Chanel and Colleen. Sorry, there's babies in the background in here. <laughs> Allison has a little baby. Mm -hmm. Can I just pull him up and show? Yeah. If you guys see the stuff that's getting thrown around, it's by this little guy. Yeah. <laughs> say hi. Hi. Yeah. Say hi. Hi. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> hi. He's so cute. You've been out. You said five years. Been out for five years. Yeah. So I just had to ask: Is Daniel on your birth certificate? No. No, he's not on my birth certificate, and there, there's just no name under father. It's unknown. Mm -hmm. But okay. that was when I was in the order. I have since been adopted, and now I don't have. Dad on my birth certificate and a different mom. So oh, wow. That's so, what, okay. We're gonna get into that when we talk about when you left. Mm -hmm. What age were you when you started working for the order? Eight. Eight. eight years old. I was eight when I had my first job, and I remember, remember I wanted to work so bad though. Like I remember I went to Advanced Copy and I was like, "Can we work here with me and my one of my other sisters? Can we work here?" And we would work for the day. We would go to like one of Daniel's companies, A One, and we would work there. Wow. I remember getting on the school bus after school and getting dropped off at work but that's how yeah. I was yeah the bus so would we take me. us to work when do you recall getting pressured to get married I mean it's just a part of life like you when you go to school when you go to church it's just always talked about mm -hmm. so I want to say since I understood what people were saying that it was like a pressure to get married that's just what they taught and then when i was 11 then i started going to preparation for marriage classes where apparently daniel has his own marriage preparation class yeah right? so it was just his kids but yeah we would just go it was like every other sunday yeah i, I would go to preparation for marriage classes at 11. so after um, church mm -hmm. after church what type of stuff did they talk about? They would teach just like like how to budget, how to make a menu big enough for a big family. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop! Can you sit with me? You're driving me nuts, dude. You need to get dad to come Do you think you? that he would be nice if he sat on my lap? For 30 seconds maybe. <laughs> No, you already don't. It was like he was perfectly fine playing. As soon as we turn the camera on, he's like, mm. How do you have to like... A meal prep for a big family, and then um, just like how to be a good wife. You know the thing that they would teach everybody, like wives, make sure the vacuum's off when your husbands get home, like to be oh, respectful. In the, yes, like don't make sure the kids aren't crying when he gets home. Like make sure your make sure he done, done, your hair's done. done. <laughs> yeah. So it was just like that type of thing. Did that ever? Did you know? Yes, it okay. did. I, I wasn't even in marriage prep, but they were talking about how to be a good wife yeah. one Sunday, and I felt like I was the only one getting mad, so it makes me happy that yeah, someone else it was. bothered me. And I just remem remember thinking that I hoped I would find a guy in the order that didn't believe that a woman needed to be treated that way. I mean, ha okay. however many girls were thinking that, I'm like, there's got to be guys that were thinking the same thing, that they like, want to respect the women. <laughs> Right. I don't, to this day, I don't know. I didn't ask you. <laughs> I never stuck around to find out. And you're not, and you're not allowed to say. So. Exactly. Did you ever have anyone come forward on you or go on, like, have a guy tell you direction? On... None, none, nothing? Ever? No, I never. So I left when I, a month after I turned 16. And so I was young okay, yeah. ish when I left. But I never had anybody come forward on me that I know of because you know how they, they go to their parents and then they go to the leader and then they go to your parents and then they talk to the girl and sometimes the parents can just tell them no before the girl ever even knows what's going on so as far as I know nobody ever even came forward on me I was also one of the younger girls in the family so I had older sisters that were single that were still single so it was I, I feel like all the attention goes on the oldest girl it's and then so once they're married and then check the next girl yeah my older sister had like people lining up she was going having to go every weekend i feel like yeah, and hear this these guys direction and then um, as soon as she got married then people start coming forward on me right mm -hmm. so yeah so. and it's weird too i would get her sloppy seconds like the ones that got oh. married her would go forward on me <laughs> really like, yeah i feel like they do they do that in every family like well maybe my direction wasn't for the older sister it was for the younger one yeah maybe so that's weird. so weird do you ever recall getting blood tested to see what like relative you could marry yes like and it wasn't even discreet either like they flat out told us when we were kids who's that, that daniel daniel okay. yeah so it was after church and it, we went into one of the church classrooms mm -hmm. and 
the one who draws blood, the nurse, I don't know what her job description is, but she <laughs> knew how to work a needle apparently. And she was the one who was drawing our blood. I couldn't have been more than nine years old, oh nine, ten years old. And they straight up told us that it was so they knew who we were compatible with when having kids in the order and who we weren't compatible with. And like, I'm like, Which, oh, that makes sense. Like, I don't want to have deformed kids. Uh -huh. So yeah, take my blood. Like, so they told me that that's so weird because they, they believe in like direction from God. And so if they believe in direction from God, why would they need blood? Testing? Yeah. You know? So, so to me, I think that they were starting to realize that there's all these deformities happening. So yeah. then they're like, okay, we need to start blood testing. But how many kids were in the room with you getting blood tested? Mm -hmm. They were my dad's kids that were around my age. So there had to have been maybe 10. She only had so many vials. Some of them didn't even get to get their blood that day. I just remember I was the last one. And it was like, I wanted to. I want to know now, you mm -hmm. know, who you're going to marry. Let's get the show on the road, figure out who I'm compatible with. Were you scared that it could be one of your half-brothers? <sighs> I didn't think I really thought about it. I didn't I guess you were young. I, I, yeah, I was so young. I didn't really understand that being related to the person you're marrying, mm -hmm. you know? It seems so normal, too, in the order. Like, I remember being like, it's kind of weird that we're all marrying our cousins. Yeah, but as I got older, then I was like, cousins are oh. better than siblings, right? Yeah, I, exactly. I remember thinking, as long as I can get a second cousin, I'll be happy. But even still, there were so many cousins that I was related to. Mm -hmm. and I was like, my selection is going to be small. I was talking to Chanel, and she was talking about how they had that meeting where Daniel was like, you could be married to even some of the siblings in this room. Yeah. How they would he talk like that. stuff all the time. It's so. weird because my dad never really said stuff like that because I think he knew how much my mom hated that he married his half-sister. Yeah. It took, once I figured, like, understood what it was to be related to somebody, then, yeah, it was weird to me. And I just remember thinking, like, if that's what they're going to do, like, Ugh, like gross but I'm not doing it like, you can't make me do that it's weird though the things that you I don't know I'm kind of going off subject but it's making me think about this like people on the outside think that we're all crazy for doing all these crazy things in this cult but like any outsider that's out there even people watching this if you were in the same situation you would do the same stuff exactly. like you're, not, you're surrounded by this place that's telling you this is how it is and this is normal how are you going to know that there's anything else Exactly. It's just normal. Like, exactly. I remember thinking that the planet was called the Order. You see? And that everybody was the same, and that's just the way of life. Like, yeah. I didn't realize until I started going to public school that there was a lot of different things out there. Yeah. But I talked to someone from the FLDS, they kind of said the same thing. They thought that Warren Jeffs was the president of America. <laughs> yeah, you just... <laughs> you don't know! I don't know what I thought outsiders were. I, yeah. Well, I remember thinking... A figment of my imagination. They weren't really there. <laughs> they just weren't lucky enough to be in the order. That's yeah. what I remember thinking. And, like, I would judge them, too. It's just weird how your process of your brain works when you're in a cult. It's so different. Did you ever hear stories about your sisters that had left? Like, or Andrea or Jessica? Do you remember? I Yeah, it was more like rumors. Like, they didn't sit us down and tell us bedtime stories about them when they left. It was yeah. just, like, the rumor. I always knew... So with I always knew that she was, like, I knew what really happened. It wasn't like, they didn't lie to you. They didn't lie to me, but it's because I heard it from, like, my other brothers and sisters. I'm sure if I heard it from, like, Daniel or my mom or something, then it would have been a different story. But my other brothers and sisters would tell me, yes, yeah, she married her uncle. She didn't want to be married to her uncle. She went to her mom for help. Her mom called Daniel. Daniel took her to the ranch. Daniel beat her, like, almost to death, basically. Yeah. And then she called, walked. Well, to like a, a gas mile. station. Yeah, who knows? Like, she just walked until she found a gas yeah. station. Because Washington's in the middle of nowhere, right? Mm -hmm. That's where she was at. Yeah, and so, and then called the cops. Mm -hmm. And then... So that was one of, like, the biggest stories in the order. I, maybe I should explain it to the viewers that don't know what we're talking about. But, um, was Daniel's daughter who was married to her uncle, David. Didn't Daniel do jail time for that? Yeah, he did. He did, I want to say David did about four years, and Daniel did about six months. Six months for almost beating her to death. I just think that story is such a big deal because it, it's what caused me to question the order. When I started to find out that they were lying and saying that Daniel didn't beat her, and she, you know, her friends got drunk and beat her up, when in reality, she was forced to marry her uncle and Daniel 
took her to watch Key and beat her up because she didn't want to. He's trying to fight the marriage, but apparently you knew the truth. <laughs> I always knew, and it was like, but the way that they talked about it was, well, then she should have just wanted to marry her uncle. Like, it wasn't, we didn't tell the story as if Daniel was the bad guy and was the victim. We told it as if well, she should have just done what she was told and she could have avoided the beating. Like, we well, all knew wanted. the law of the land, so mm -hmm. she should have known. Did you ever hear about um, Andrea and Jessica and why they left? I heard that they left because our aunt who had left, that she was brainwashing them and they were just being defiant kids. And so, and then when they got into state's custody, then the state was drugging them and telling yeah. them, yeah, so that they were being drugged and told what to say. So that nothing they say is valid. Yeah. They're not going to listen to anything. And it was like taking them to parties and then getting them drunk. And they were what? Always. 12 <laughs> and 14. Did and you believe any of the story? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> makes sense. No, that's what else that is there, yeah. right? It's so know. funny how that makes sense when you're in Yeah. Like, yep. That, oh. that checks out. And then you leave and you're like, why did I believe that? I know. Sometimes I wonder what they say about me, but like, I'd rather not know. Because you know there's overnight they're telling stories about you after you leave. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't want people to believe your story. They want to believe that you have the truth to say about the order. And they want people to hear their version of the story before they could hear your version of right. the story. So that they can control how it's heard. Exactly. Okay, here's a big question is what made you want to leave? It's not ever one thing. I know, it's so many things. I think the biggest thing was I just, I felt like such a fraud. Like, living in a world, pretending to be this good order member, and I believe believing all of their teachings and I just felt so fake like I was just living a lie and I wasn't myself because you didn't believe it because I didn't believe it it didn't it never made sense to me from the polygamy to the, the racism the lies they would tell about the people who left and the abuse for the, on the kids watching these kids get abused pissed me off and whenever I would question it and then they would tell me you just like to argue you just like to find fault what age were you starting to question it Maybe 14. I started to question it at 14 just because it just, I remember even younger than that, as young as like five, six, seven, eight, then things just didn't make sense. Yeah. The racism at that young didn't make sense to me. Yeah. I remember I went to public school and the first friend I made was a black girl. And I brought her home because I didn't understand why I couldn't bring her home and hang out with her. And my dad got so like mad. Like you at just me. brought in like Satan a monster. Himself. And their explanations were never like, we're not supposed to mix race just because, like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, because it was like, um, people of color came from Cain, and Cain is basically like the devil himself. Like, and then the war story. in heaven. Yeah. The yeah. war in heaven is one thing that they'd always go back to is that the white people chose Jesus and God's side, the demons of hell chose Satan's side, and then anyone who is colored is. On the Spencer, yeah, they couldn't did, they couldn't decide who to So pick. basically, they're waiting to see who wins, type mm -hmm. of thing. And so they're all supposed to like go to hell when they die, which to me didn't make sense. It's like, it why would God put sense. them here if yeah. they're just gonna go straight to hell? And I remember asking, and I was like, I don't know who I would ask my mom, my dad, I don't know who I was asking, but I'm like, but what if they are good people? Mm -hmm. Like, what if they, they live good lives and they're good people? Then what? They're like, well, they made the decision to go to hell before they were born. So I'm like, <laughs> It's so dumb. Yeah. And they tell you all people of color, all people who are not white, and then you meet one person that's an outlier, and you're like, that doesn't, yeah. The logic behind that is flawed because I found somebody that doesn't fit the description. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's why they keep you in the older schools, which is surprising that you questioned it because did you have any so, Yeah. So okay, when I was a little <laughs> girl, then I got lost at a public grocery store. Mm -hmm. Little, little. Like, Tiny. I don't even know how we've all had was. this experience yeah. getting lost. I got lost at a grocery <laughs> store and a black man came up to me and like took my hand and he's like, are you lost? Do you need help? Do you want me to help you find your mom? And he took me to the... Were you terrified? <laughs> yeah, I was confused. I was like, did What's he just say help me? Yeah. And then he took me to the counter and he's like, this little girl's lost. And I just remember since that day, since that specific encounter, I will always remember that guy. That every time they taught racism, then I was like, you don't know what you're talking about because mm -hmm. I'm, and usually, I had an encounter and exactly. he wasn't the way that you're explaining them to be. One, One. experience can change your At opinion. such a young age. And so just ever since then, I was, the racism didn't make sense to me. So I was like, but one time when I got lost, <laughs> he helped me out. He helped. <laughs> I'm going to put in a good word with Jesus yeah. when I die. <laughs> I kept thinking like, if heaven's like this place, like, 
I don't really want to go. <laughs> that had an effect. Did anything else have an effect on making you want to leave? Mostly the the abuse, and I wanted to go to school. That was my main thing. I wanted to go to college, to high school. Oh, high school. I wanted to go to high school because I was. I got the. I call it a plagiarized diploma, but everybody. <laughs> Everybody in the order is like, it was a real diploma. No, technically, it's a plagiarized diploma. Is it? The yeah. Cluster? Yeah, well, because if because if you're cheating your way through four years of high school, get your diploma in seven months, and you cheated your way through that, mm. like, that's plagiarized. That's fake. That's, that's not real. All of us kind of got our high yeah, school Yeah, so it's a plagiarized diploma. Oh, yeah. But then it's like... There's no way to know that it's plagiarized unless you like tell on yourself and then <laughs> rip up the diploma. They're not going to send you a new diploma, a, you know, a new mm -hmm. one. But if you have the piece of paper, then that's all you really need. Yeah. So seven months of high school, basically. Yeah, I did all four years of high school in seven months and oh my cheated gosh. my way through the whole thing. Graduated high school at 14 years old, wow. and then they tried to send me to college to get a a business degree. Why they want you to go in business? Because all of Daniel's kids have to go to in business. Like, whatever you want to do with your life, you'll, we'll talk about it after you get your business degree. That's so weird. Yeah. It's weird how families are so different, because my dad did not want his girls to go to college because he thought it would help us leave, and it did. <laughs> but I guess maybe Daniel wanted you guys to help him. Yeah, because he work. had a lot of businesses. You know, he knew that having a business degree was an asset, and so he wanted mm -hmm. all of his kids to have business degrees. But at 14 years old, I was going to college for a business degree, and I had a plagiarized diploma that I got in seven months. And I, so I went for one semester, and I just, I hated it, because I wasn't smart. Yeah. Like, I, I failed math twice. Yeah, it. and it made me feel, and they just, you know, they beat you down to make you feel so stupid. Like, you can't pass this college class. And you're 14. Yeah, you're and so kidding. I'm just like, yeah. I guess I'm not fit for this, because I'm too dumb to go to college, so I didn't want to go, because mm. I was failing, because I didn't understand. That was my first time ever being around outsiders like that, oh, and wow. I was so scared and yeah. terrified of all, you know? It's anxiety, right? Yeah. You don't know it's anxiety at the time, but when I left and was having an outside job, I got so much anxiety all the time, because mm -hmm. it's like, it's all in your head, too, a lot yeah, of it. Yeah, it is. Because they feed all this stuff to you in your head, like you're not like them, you're different, they're different. You'll never be in line with them. So that was a big thing to do with why you wanted to go to leave. high school specifically. Because I wanted to eventually be good enough for college. Yeah. Did you so, know what you wanted to be? I always wanted to be in the medical field. And I remember my mom one day told me, she's like, Don't you think that you would just love like balancing checkbooks and you know, adding up like numbers. that doesn't even sound fun. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. And she's like, you only don't want to do that because the devil's telling you that you don't want to do she that. She said that. And I, yeah, and I'm like, oh my no, gosh. because I want to like be a nurse or a doctor. I want to go in the medical field. I want to count numbers and balance checkbooks my whole life. It's so funny how they use the devil. I remember feeling like I was the devil, though, because I had ditched Sunday school class, and she was saying that, and I helped my little sister. It's whenever I was influencing my little sisters, and I really would feel guilty because they're like, you're leading them astray. Like, why don't you just go lead yourself astray? Don't exactly. lead them yeah. astray. That they, I've had people say that to me before too. Yeah. yeah, it makes you feel bad. She said, like, what did she say? She she stared at me. And she's like, you have the devil in your eyes. Really? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Even after I yeah, left, I felt so you, guilty. It makes you wonder, like, am I really just like surrounded? And then you get like scared, like, yeah, yeah. You're like scared of the dark, like, oh, the, the demons that I'm surrounded by are gonna mm -hmm. get me. And then I would feel unworthy to pray even sometimes. Yeah. So dumb. It was yeah. That's how you know you're in a cult, though, is if every if they're controlling you by fear. That's what I think. Yeah. If you are making all of your decisions based on fear, you're probably in a cult. That's how they get you to do what they want. <laughs> you don't realize that until after you leave, so. Yeah. <laughs> I always wanted to leave. Like, I, I, ugh. from a young age? It's hard to explain. It was like, I didn't ever see a future in the order, but I wanted to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a good order member. I wanted to get married, have kids, do all of the things that you're supposed to do in the order. But, like I said, I felt so fake. Like, I felt like I would be living a fake life. And when I would think about my future, I saw nothing. It just felt wrong to try to think of a future in the order because it was almost like something telling me, you're not going to have a future in the order. Mm -hmm. It was almost like your higher self was telling you you're not yeah, yeah, just you, forget you about not, it. <laughs> so I remember I used to have... I always had this feeling that I was going to have a, like a, a very, very young death because I just, whenever I would think about my future, I would come up blank. Because I was like, wow. I don't see a future That's in the order. That's such a weird concept. And it was from a young, young, eight years old. 
I remember having these thoughts at eight years old thinking I don't see myself growing up in the order and I was so scared to tell anybody and I was like mm -hmm. so scared to even so. think it you know so I would just try to push the thought away because I wanted to go to heaven you know mm -hmm. I wanted to my tick golden ticket to the <laughs> The, uh, the upper floor. Degree, right? so, the upper floor. So. That's so weird. Because to me, I guess mine is a little bit different. But when I started picturing having kids in the order, it was kind of yeah. like, I can't have kids here. There's no way. Yeah. And at this point, my younger sister, Brenda, was trying to leave. And they had been putting her in, like, mental institutions. They had been putting her in rehabs for minors who are addicted to like drugs was or... she addicted to anything? no she they were saying she was addicted to porn because oh she clearly wasn't on drugs yeah. and so they were saying she was addicted to that she would run away and then she would get institutionalized and then she would get put back into the order and so and at this point i was still a minor so i was kind of watching what was happening to my younger sister who was trying to leave and then just getting thrown around and bounced around and still never being able to leave she just ended up in foster care housed at an order house oh my god so she was in state's custody but she was living in the order like she was going to church she, you, so i think utah sucks with their laws because yeah. they really they're such a family state that they're they're willing to like turn a blind eye to abuse just to keep families together yeah i've noticed they I do mean, they're definitely they're very family oriented and then even With my half sister Rachel, before she, before she died, she tried the same thing. She right. tried leaving. She tried getting help from the state, and the state kind of put her in the Christmas box house, which is like a modern day orphanage, as I kind of call it. Put her in the Christmas box house, went to court, and then put her back in an order home. Okay. She was abused over and over, and they kept sending her back home, and then she ended up committing suicide over it because she, she couldn't get out. Yeah, she was trying to get out. She would run away, they would put her back, she would run away, they would put her back, and she was getting abused. Like, mm -hmm. Daniel was very, very physically abusive towards her because she was, you know, she was fighting him. Right. The more and she fight, couldn't get out. Is, and right. so she finally just... I think she thought that was her only way out because the yeah. state had failed her. How old was she? She was 14. Oh my god. So she was 14 and she took her life not long after she was put back into an order home. Wow. So. And so you were there when all this was happening. Yeah. You were around her I was age also too. 14. You were 14. Yeah, so wow. I was 14. She was 14. Do you remember people talking about the suicide pact? Yeah. Do you know of anyone else that was in there? So, allegedly, my sister... were a part of it. Wow. And so what was the what was the goal? Like, if they couldn't leave the order, they were going yeah. to just take and it out And it was themselves. almost like... That they already knew they couldn't leave the order. Wow. So it was like they weren't even going to try to so leave. Trapped. They were just going to end their lives and end the abuse that way. Oh my God. But with Rachel, then she had Julie, who already left. And right. so she was kind of like going to take her in and help her with the process. And she, obviously, Rachel was a minor. She was 14. And so <laughs> minors have tried to leave and they can't. The state fails on They reach yeah. out to law enforcement for help they reach out to the state for help they're begging someone help me and nobody helps part them. of it is so. the kingstons have friends in high places too. yeah i'm sure i mean why else was daniel only in jail for what six months and on work release yeah <laughs> his whole time so, it's pretty obvious yeah but another reason why i want to get out of utah <laughs> and did you see that went shooting with donald trump's son he was with him yeah I thought they were together i thought yeah. he should bought guns huh? There is. Can we show those pictures? It's what? on Instagram and his Instagram's public. He was just hanging out with Donald Trump's son. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying they're like having dinner at the White House, but yeah. they but know people. All these up, people clearly. that are watching too that have commented. I've had, I've seen so many comments that people are like, why is this legal? Why is it still happening? This is why. Like when you have friends in high places you can, and you have lots of money. And I, I couldn't tell you why. I couldn't tell you how, what type of relationship they have. But there's clearly one. They clearly mm -hmm. know people, and they're clearly getting away with crazy stuff. Yeah. And so I, mean, I hate to say it, but Paul was smart in a lot of areas where he went to school for business and psychology yeah. and all these things to help him get away with all this crap. Yeah. So I'm hoping in the future, like me and Colleen have been talking to some people that are running for like the mayor in Utah and stuff like that, and we've been talking about 
changing the marriage laws here. Like, yeah. I don't think that minors should be able to get married. I don't care. They shouldn't. And before before I left, then I think parents forcing a child to get married wasn't technically against the law. There was no law written that a parent couldn't force a child to get married. A parent couldn't pressure a child into getting married. Well, if a child's getting married with parents there signing papers, yeah. I feel like there's coercion going on. Yeah, well, so In for me, way. well, when I was trying to leave, and I was getting the state involved, and they're like, well, what's some of the abuse? I'm like, well, they're trying to get me to get married. And they're like, thinking about it like that, that's not technically against the law. And I'm like... It should be! So it is now. It is? It is now. Oh, that's they great. created a bill, but that's a form of child abuse, is pressuring your child to get married. Yeah. Where before, in my case, it wasn't, so... Wow. You probably had something to do with it, too, because you are you got emancipated, right? I did not. How old were you when you finally left? When I officially got out and I was never going back, I was 16 years old, but <laughs> when I was 15, I thought that I could kind of play the fence because, mm -hmm. you know, people, they're in the order, they're out of the order, they kind of, they want to live the outside life, but they want to still have their family. Yeah. So, so they sit on the fence as long, but that only lasts for so long. Yeah. Can't really do that and I was 15, long. and typically they're not 15, they're yeah. adults <laughs> doing what doing whatever they want, realizing, oh, I'm an adult, I can live this outside life and still have Pretend my family. Pretend to be in the order, yeah. So I wanted to do that, and so, because I didn't want to lose my family, but I wanted to go to high school, I wanted to Did have a Did you tell job. anyone you wanted to leave at that time? 15? Yeah. So, so, it was actually, I'm trying to remember how it happened, but I, because the main thing was I wanted to go to high school, so I met with Your my sister? sister, one of my half-sisters. She was kind of doing that, where she was kind of living her outside life, doing whatever she wanted, but then she still had her family, she was still an order member. Going to church. So I was like, I'm gonna, she's told me that sh I could move in with her. Was she, she living would, alone? Yeah, she was living alone oh. with just her and her baby. That I could move home. in with her. She would um, <coughs> convince, I don't know why I believe this, but yeah. she would convince Daniel and my mom to sign over their rights, their rights of me to her so that she could enroll me in school and that she would be my legal guardian and I could do all you know, I can go to school, I can get a job when I turned 16, because at this time I was still only 15, I could get a job on the outside. And so I did. I moved in with her and nothing was happening. You like, still weren't allowed to go to school. Still, still wasn't allowed to go to school. My parents were signing over their rights. And then slowly, as time went by living with her, then she was kind of like a spy on me. So I, anytime I did anything or anytime, you know, then she would go and tell Daniel or she would tell my other sisters, and so then all of my sisters started to, like, attack me. Like, you're trying to leave the order, like, you're basically an outsider as of right now just because you haven't actually made the step to leave. And so... Why would she do that, do you think? I don't like, know. did she want you to stay in the order? I think at that time, I think she wanted me to stay in the order, and then I think she was also battling her own. Mm -hmm. She was still, she was still in the process of figuring out what she was going to do with her life, so I think she also was trying to con like have a good life in the order and so she thought that she would use me as like leverage with daniel like it sucks siblings do that like yeah. if they start title telling on one of the other siblings it kind of gets the heat off of them yeah so she <laughs> they would trust her more if she was kind of throwing me under the bus oh, and so i, I was with, i know i was with her for months and then eventually like it just got so it was to the point where she would lock me out if i didn't come home at a certain time and she was already asleep i would didn't have a key to the house so i would sleep on the lawn oh, and she would gosh. lock me out or i would sleep Hi. in a park so finally you're like okay yeah and i'm like Get she's up. not helping me like she says she was school was about to start and it had been months and months a whole half of the school year already went by and i'm like the older i get then like i'm gonna get past high school age and they're not no high school's gonna let a 20 year old go to high school <laughs> right and so i was i wanted you know so i just was like this is pointless like i'm not she's not helping me she's making things worse for me she's right. turning everybody against me She's like spying on me and telling Daniel everything. Oh. So I just packed up all of my stuff and went back to my mom's. And at this point, I was I had given up. I was like, it's not gonna happen. My plan failed. <laughs> and so, well, the night before it was my time to leave, then I was packing all of my stuff, like getting everything ready in my room, and my door was just closed and locked. My mom knocks on the door, and she says, "Let me in." And my stuff's everywhere, like oh, in no. bags. 